Let's just talk a little bit about uh, where gold is and why it's at these levels. I guess we, don't, we have uncertainty in the U.S. about the debt ceiling, and we've got, of course, the Greek and, well, the southern European peripheral country crisis, too. Yeah. Um, gold is a, a subject that we like, and we uh, recently published a very detailed uh, production report on a uh, gold market. And because I think uh, in the market, a lot of people know the demand side of the story already. We, ha we have the uncertainties globally, and uh, we, we have the you know QE three becoming an increasing scenario, and um, all sort of uncertainties. So that side is uh, pretty well known. Uh, but what we have done recently is uh, we look at the supply side of the story and uh, we count all the gold mines, major gold mines under construction and see what's the production growth for the next couple of years. That's, like. that's the thing, isn't it, Yan Chen? I mean, you've studied something like 375 miners and yeah. mining companies here. But over the last few years, we just really haven't seen much come on in terms of supply. I mean, how much has supply been growing and how does it weigh up next to the demand side to here? Yes. If we count all the 375 gold mines and if the gold companies has uh, done a pretty good job, uh, then in the base case, we think uh, the production growth is going to be only 3.6% per annum for the next couple of years. And what's the demand projected to be? And uh, the demand, we, we, we did a pretty uh, simplistic uh, view on that. Uh, even if uh, we keep the whole demand on a flat line basis, we think the gold market is still going to be um, in a deficit uh, for the next couple of years. Just given that uh, the central banks are now back buying gold massively. And uh, that, that's the other thing, because uh, for the gold market, we, we talk about, say, under production growth and uh, underground uh, production growth versus the mining production growth, and they're not there. And for the above ground supply, and the central banks are now uh, turning from um, net, buyer, uh, net seller of gold into net buyer of gold, and that's a massive shrink. Yeah, that's certainly the case, and we saw how many of the central banks in uh, Europe sold off gold. But let's just talk a little bit about... Well, the other side, the unwillingness perhaps to put more supply onto the market by these mining groups because they like the status quo as it is. Uh, that, that's part of the, the issue. The other part of the issue is uh, in our uh, production growth study, we also look at the uh, IRR of the gold projects right now. And it just turned out that uh, the gold price has to be very, very high to justify building a gold mine. To give an, an idea for a brownfield project, uh, you need to talk about the uh, gold price to be, long term gold price to be as high as uh, 14 Hundred per hour. That, that's the big barrier to entry, is what you're yes, saying here. Exactly. And so we're talking about. And do you see? I mean, let's have a look at your price targets here as well. Okay. Let's have a look at uh, yeah. the end of 2011. Where will gold be? And where will gold be in five years, for instance, too? Right. Uh, we have a separate commodity team to set the gold price assumptions here. And then basically, in our base case, we are looking to gold price to reach about $2,000. By okay, so that means it makes yeah. these greenfield sites by viable at that point then? By, by 2014. And then uh, if uh, in the bull case scenario, and uh, if we just look at the one factor uh, model uh, driven by GDP per capita in China and India, then uh, there is a chance that the gold price can be as high as $5,000. Yeah, uh, 5000 Yeah, by, but that's by 2020. All oh, right, okay, that's quite cool there. Yeah. So we're seeing a you know, well, huge uh, uh, amount of growth there in the price. But uh, okay, let's see, who's going to be buying the most gold? Is it traditionally the Indians who have the wedding season coming on, I think, in a couple of months from now, or is it going to be the Chinese? Uh, I would say both. Uh, if you look at uh, the gold price correlation to a number of factors, uh, in fact, uh, the gold price uh, has the highest correlation to uh, GDP per capita uh, or disposable income uh, in China and India in the uh, past 30 years, basically.